World Press Freedom Day 2024, and we are here to talk about press freedom in the digital age, commemorating the 2024 World Press Freedom Day. And in the studio this morning, it's an honor to be in the studio with the first female professor of mass communication in West Africa, and uh, is a repeater. Uh, she is also the vi Deputy Vice Chancellor, Paul University, a former Commissioner for Information in Anambra State. Uh, uh, and she's also called Mommy by all that know her very well. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and in fact, we can go on and on to talk about this great woman in our midst this morning, Professor Chinere Stella Okuna. It's good to have you in the studio, Mommy. My pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. We also have in the studio Dr. Ifani Val Obiefuna. Dr. Ifani Val is the chairman, Angel Network News. News. You're welcome to the studio. Thank you. All right. Now, Mommy, uh, before we really uh, talk about so many other things, I want you to take us into the historical background of press freedom. Well, as the name implies, it is freedom for the press. People call the press also the media. And it means the entire world recognizes the power of the press. We all know it. And realizing this power, the world thought through the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, everything, that everybody really should have freedom to express the opinion. But be because the press is in such a vantage position, it's so privileged in terms of its powers to do things, to confess status, to serve as watchdog, to broker information. The, po the, the, the functions are so fundamental that the world said, give them the freedom to gather and disseminate information, particularly in a democracy. Because no other institution, no other group of people possess the power to gather efficiently, package professionally, and disseminate widely the quality and quantity of information required to make democracy work. So press freedom means freedom to communicate without any external interference. That's press freedom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you can you give us? It's a global thing. It's a global thing. But mm. can you give us the date where when actually this was enacted and made to mm. be? You know. Do I remember the date? Okay. <laughs> okay. If not, Leval, you can come in now and tell us. You know, can we say that uh, we have press freedom in Nigeria? Oh. Well, in every democratic setting. The press, freedom of the press is, a, is essential because the journalist, the primary function of journalists is to hold the political elite accountable. <laughs> but in Nigeria, this is, a, this is not what we see here because the press in Nigeria has been undermined by the elites. So freedom of the press is really eroded. Hmm. And for us to get it right, it has to start from our homes. Hmm. For you to be a journalist, you have to disseminate information. Oh, okay, just hold it there. At least we've been established that it's not just, it's not that free in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Mommy, I know you, you started as a student before you, become, you became um, a lecturer, before you wrote so many books, which I read one well, while I was in school, English for MassCom, oh. by Professor Okuna. Okay, before you got to this level, how was it in this nation when it comes to press freedom? Because I, I believe that it's like something happened along the line yeah. that the, the press you know, is being gagged not to say what they ought to say. I remember growing up, uh, the, the press, Nigerian press, was adjudged to be quite free. Remember, I keep saying 
that press freedom means no extra legal. There's no free press anywhere, not okay. even in the U.S. Okay. There's nowhere where the press is completely free, free. because there are legal constraints. Okay. There are things the press cannot do within the parameters of law. And we're saying, once those legal, legal restraints are removed, any other control on the press becomes a non-free non press. So uh, coming up, not in this profession, even as a young person, mm -hmm. remember even before we were born, or before we, we became adults, was Zeke not a, a journalist? Okay. How would he have been there and not give press freedom? The Nigerian press was among those that felt we are free in Africa, even globally. But gradually, I think everything began to scatter, so to say, to fall apart when the military intervention began. Remember that even it was the press that fought for independence. Remember? Before 1950 came, 1960 came, it was the Nigerian press that really vehemently fought the British people to help free. So there, has always, there was always press freedom in Nigeria. And the press had that freedom to speak out, to challenge even the colonial masters. I don't remember, and I'm sure I know where it began to go wrong, but I have a feeling it was after independence, and particularly after the military intervention. intervention. Mm -hmm. All right, now this morning in the papers, you know, we saw some people, uh, you know, eulogizing the journalists uh, mm -hmm. as to mark their day, and of course, I think the Senate or House of Reps, uh, you know, talking about uh, releasing journalists held in detention to mark the day. And of course, uh, there's one prominent uh, thought this morning. They said, press freedom crucial to democracy yeah. and good governance. Val, could you come in and let us know how press freedom can help in good governance, especially in this 21st century, when mm -hmm. we know that our country is passing through some challenges? Well, as I said earlier, in every democratic set of press, has a vital role to play. Okay. And one of the major functions of uh, journalists in democracy is to educate and sensitize the people. For example, the need to vote. You know, people disenfranchise themselves that uh, their vote doesn't count. Mm -hmm. It is the duty of journalists to educate the masses that it is highly important and their civic responsibility to participate in election processes. So there are various ways journalists contribute to development in our country. If only we we'll allow a free play. And also, we also know the barriers. One of the barriers we have is the emergence of digital media, mm -hmm. which has promoted fake news and propagandas. And sometimes, our politicians use this avenue to counter what we perceive as the original information, thereby throwing the masses into what we call deep confusion, not knowing truly what to follow and what not to follow. So what we need to do is to start educating our children from, from, from the grassroots on how to see information not just to uh, accept everything we see in social media, who click and censor. So I think the journalist has a major role to play in development of this country. Thank you. All right. Now, I think, Mommy, you have to come in at this point to help us understand, you know, that what this statement actually is saying, that uh, press freedom is crucial to democracy and good governance. Does it mean that what we are experiencing now on the, uh, that, um, you know, gagging the press <laughs> is part of the problem we are facing as a nation? It is. Very fundamental pr um, problem. Mm. You know, I keep using this same phrase, maybe overused, that the press is the oxygen of democracy. You know what that means? You know what oxygen means? Mm. That means if you remove the press, in any democracy, democracy dies. Because like I began saying, no other group of people, no other person or individual or group possesses the power, the capacity, the efficiency 
to gather the quantity and quality of information. Democracy requires huge amounts of information, like he said, mm. on everything to make democracy work. And no other group can do that. Gather the quality and quantity, package that information efficiently, and disseminate it very widely. That means, since only the press can do that, if you don't give it the freedom to do that work, democracy dies. And that is why if you come to countries like Nigeria where the press is not really free, democracy can never Fine. survive or, or shine as brilliantly mm. as it does where journalists are allowed to. And sometimes people like uh, uh, countries like Nigeria take journalists for granted. They don't appreciate us enough. They don't know the powers we have. Look at the power of uh, a watchdog, the watchdog. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the constitution, the world over, gives the press that power. Because we call it um, representative democracy. Democracy in the common parlance means government of the people, remember it, mm -hmm. for the people and by, and by the people. But because all the people cannot govern, we elect our representatives. That's why it's called representative democracy. Mm. And the job of the press is to keep watching those you have elected who are representing you to make sure they are governing on your behalf. And if they're not doing that, you call them to order. That's the watchdog function of the press, the surveillance function also. And if you don't let the press have, uh, have the freedom they require to do this, democracy. Can you you know, mommy, let me, let me come in. <laughs> you know, what you said now really touched me because... <laughs> I see myself as a minister whenever yeah. I'm on duty. Yes. You know, when you talk about, you know, uh, bringing our leaders to book or uh, watching you have them to, to keep watching you know, them. to ensure they do oh, what they do, oh, you know, uh, yeah. let them be accountable. Yes. Uh, you begin to, the, the way things are going these days, and um, this uh, brown envelope issue with the press and whatever, it seems um, it could be part of the reason the press are not regarded or held in high esteem uh, as they should. Or do you think so, Val? I don't think so, because even the politicians also have brand envelope. <laughs> even teachers also have brand envelope okay. these days. So okay. it's not just in, uh, in journal uh, journalists alone. Okay. Every profession has corrupt individuals. Okay, so why do you think? Because this, this thing in this country, you know, the, I used to hear follow-up stories to see where it ends, you know. But these days, sometimes, you will see a story today. You'll be waiting to see how that story is followed. It's you know, journalists, we don't have safety. Okay. Mm -hmm. The our constitution and also the country do not guarantee the safety of journalists. We need the government to guarantee the safety of journalists so that the quality of information mm -hmm. being produced or investigative journalism okay. becomes a reality in Nigeria. All right. So the government has to guarantee the safety of journalists. So in other words, a uh, journalist that is, you know, trying to save your head, so yes, to speak. Sometimes. Or, or by accepting brown envelope? No, no, no I'm talking, oh. what you're saying, no, safety. No, what I mean, safety it's one of the most is most unsafe. Yeah. when you have an information, you say the information that you don't know how the information ends, mm. When you have an information, let me use for example, you have an information of a local government chairman okay. who has embezzled money mm. and you br bring out the information and you get threatening messages. Maybe when you run to the police, the police will tell you to, to check yourself if you are really sure and <laughs> no, there's no guarantee of your safety. So do you think that information will come out successfully? Okay. So what we are saying here is not about the brand envelope. We are saying that security of journalists has to be guaranteed. All right. I think we'll, we'll talk more on that when we talk about the challenges that journalists of mm -hmm. today face. Now, uh, let's look at the, the topic of, of our discussion. That's a, a press freedom in the digital age. And uh, we know what is happening in this 21st century. So now when you gag the journalists, the other people, the younger generation will take it up. So which one is now better? You know, when you talk about 
given the is it better for you to give freedom to the trained journalist a professional that can do the job the way it should be done effectively <laughs> and efficiently or do you allow the younger people to use the digital age to mess us up mommy <laughs> i think it's madness out there mm. they call themselves um, citi yes. citizen journalists mm. that is citizen journalism okay. and i think it's turning the world upside down because uh, it's, it's called gatelessness. You know, one of the major uh, uh, aspects of the press is uh, gatekeeping. 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 That means there are checks and balances, beginning from the reporter who goes to the field and gathers information, packages the information properly, files his copy to his editor, who is more experienced and looks at it. There is no gatekeeping in the digital age now. Anybody with a smartphone, I think folks that are not even so smart, can gather any information without proper processing, mm. without any, any checks and balances by anybody, even by himself. The world is there, he disseminates. And a lot of damage is being done mm. to, to reputation, to governance, to all manner of things. So I think the government is losing if they don't allow the trained and Get kept, get kept journalists, so mm. to say, to do their work. You allow any kind of watching that has a cell phone to destroy you. And it's, it's almost impossible to control the social media. Mm -hmm. For now, we haven't found any way of saying, oh, you cannot do this. And um, things are going very, very wrong. Mm. Mm -hmm. Get right. keeping must be enforced somehow for journalism to have any meaning. All right. That's all. Okay. Now, Paul, in this um, digital age, you know, uh, do you think or uh, do you foresee, and mommy say that there's no way we can, you know, control what is going on there for now, but do you foresee a way that there could be checks and balances to forestall the activities there and, of course, maintain freedom of the press at the same time? Currently, uh, President Tinibu is trying a lot to do something to checkmate uh, social media influence on information dissemination. And uh, the only way the government can come in is to make sure that they regulate law that will eliminate social media propagandas. Because sometimes when I look around, I am a grassroots person. I see some of our politicians, they don't employ the real journalists <laughs> to air out their manifesto, their proposal, their, what they have for the people. They go back and use whoever they want. So if we can, as a government, see journalists as part of the process for development in our country, I think uh, it, will help, it will help a long way. And also, I have advice for journalists also. We need to be self-contented. One of the problems we have as journalists is that we always allow material things to entice us, either by promise or by promise of uh, maybe employment or, or job opportunity. So we need to be contented in ourselves and also see the profession as what we love not where we find ourselves being passionate be passionate about it and be contented because if we are contented i don't think the government will come in and manipulate all the way they are doing us now the employers have to also sit up yes mm -hmm. like like now currently most of our most of our political elites they don't regard journalism. Mm -mm. I think if you're a governor and you come up to the seat, the first set of people you need to see are the journalists. These are the people you need to tell your plan, your short-term plan, your long-term plan. These are the people that will market you. But our politicians use journalists only during campaign period. <laughs> and once after campaign, journalists are no money there. All right. What you said now reminded me of what uh, the NLC chairman 
said about uh, civil servants, you know, the, the, during uh, the uh, Workers' Day on 1st May, that they needed to be brought closer to governance, to be part of what is happening, you know, to help in making uh, policies and programs that will even, you don't just leave them to the, at the background at the end of the day. They don't know anything that is going on in the government. Okay, that's by the way. Now, let, let's, uh, I don't know, the theme for this year's uh, Press Freedom Day says a press for the planet, journalism in the face of the environmental crisis. Mom, could you interpret this for us? A press for the planet, journalism in the face of the environmental crisis? That is the crisis. Hmm. You know, we, we all talk about climate change. Climate change, people believe, is happening because of what we have done and continue doing to our environment. We are not taking care of the earth. And there are even fears that in the next uh, maybe in maybe a century or even less, from now, the earth might disappear. Mm -hmm. I'm not so pessimistic, but I think we need to take care of this earth. It's the only one we have now. People are, are going to the moon and everywhere, trying to find habitation out there. But it hasn't happened yet. This is the only earth we know. And the press has to be, like in everything, the champion for defending the earth. Mm -hmm. Like we keep talking about the watchdog. A watchdog literally is the dog that sits at your gate watching everything for you, observing. And if anything untoward is happening, the watchdog backs. And if, con if he continues to get worse, he, he even bites. <laughs> so that's what the press should be doing also, watching what is happening to the earth, not just politics now. Watching the environment, alerting people, uh, 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 illuminating, that is uh, explaining what the dangers are and there are dangers. It is the press, like in everything, we are everywhere that should identify the actions we are taking and what the negative impacts of those actions can be on the earth and disseminate that information widely and alert people to the dangers of what they are doing. So I agree, it's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. So you know, sometimes we, we think politics is everything. Every year you put up a political theme and this kind of, but this is good because the earth is really suffering mm. from human action. And climate change, this is the beginning. Mm -hmm. You can see the bizarre things happening now. Hon Look at the heat alone. Honestly. The ozone layer has been depleted. Honest. Do, do, we, do we talk about the indiscriminate sighting of boreholes oh, here and oh, there? Oh. <laughs> and this, this plastic menace, oh my goodness. Mm. As a child, did we even see blast plastic bags? <laughs> but they're everywhere now and they are causing a lot of havoc. Mm. It is the press, again, our own press, mm. our profession that should, as we are talking about generally, um, politicians also, educate people, enlighten people about what the earth is going through and how dangerous our actions are. Mm. Are we doing that? All right, the program <laughs> is Good Morning, <laughs> Alhambra, and it's the World uh, Press Freedom Day 2024. In the studio, we are talking about the press freedom in the digital age with the guru in mass communication in the studio here doing justice to that. We take a short break here. The program returns after now. Please join us again. Great news for Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS audience. You can now watch ABS television through any of these ways. Buy a terrestrial antenna and connect to your television. Search ABS Channel 24 Orca or ABS Channel 27 on each. Install Star Times Cable Decoder and search ABS Channel 113. Install Metro Digital Cable Decoder and search ABS Channel 29. Watch ABS TV on your smart TV or smartphone by downloading Anambra Broadcasting Service app on Google Play Store. Also watch via ABS Facebook page at ABS Radio Television and ABS YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. ABS TV is now also on satellite. You can watch us from anywhere in Nigeria and other African countries. Simply install RTV Decoder brand and tune to channel 315 or install any free to air satellite decoder and search for ABS TV. Whichever option you choose, stay abreast of breaking news, documentaries, children's shows, talk shows, comedy, sports, movies, and lots more on your darling TV station. For 
adverts and program sponsorship. Contact 0803-388-8526 or 0806-883-9902. ABS, Heartbeat of the East. You're welcome back to the studios of Good Morning Anambra, Press Freedom in the Digital Age, commemorating the 2024 World Press Freedom Day. And uh, we're back after the break. Uh, now, let's look at what we stand to gain as a people when the press is given the freedom to operate in our world. Val. world stands to gain if the press is being given the freedom, which I know the freedom cannot be absolute, okay. mm -hmm. is false. We will get the right information. Our information will be verifiable and will be profitable and resourceful. The second thing we stand to gain is that we will be able to make our leaders accountable from their manifesto to their promises and their delivery. The third thing is that it will also serve as an educative forum for the masses in terms of the best system of governance, the best form of uh, getting our society well acquainted with the best operating system that will help us. Because what, what, what is permissible in a particular place might not be admissible in a particular place. So we need to give the press a little bit freedom and also guarantee their safety. Because journalists are really the ingredients, as Prof said, the oxygen of democracy. Without journalists, democracy will never strive to a sustainable aspect of it. And one of the issues about press is that people are eager to receive information. It's only the press that gives the information of how the leaders intend to better their lives. The masses cannot go straight to our leaders mm -hmm. to, get, to seek information. It's only through press that the masses get information on how to better their selves and also how to follow up with their leaders. Mm -hmm. So I think it is the right time for us to use this 2024 press day Freedom celebration day. to talk to our leaders why they should get closer to the press, to journalists, see them as part of leadership process. Try to hold symposiums and seminars with the press and the journalists to inform them of their ideas their manifesto, the best way they think is better for them to govern the state. So that the, the, the journalists will take it back to the masses. Oh, all right, Ma Mama, I think you have to come in at this point to, you know, expand more on what we stand to gain. And before you do that, I don't know whether you watched, there's a clip I watched online about um, uh, an Arise News uh, correspondent asking uh, the uh, minister, uh, for road uh, question, you know, the way he answered that question. Some, in fact, I was arguing with somebody. The person said that he never answered that question, yes. you know, the way he talked and all that. <laughs> Put it into consideration. And the, the, the lady was asking about this uh, Calabar Lagos uh, coastal uh, road or stuff like that, which the information is very, very important. But the way the minister answered that, you know, left much to be desired. Bob? One of the greatest um, impediments to press freedom here is uh, the impunity by elected officials. Okay. Well, I don't really blame them. Many of them are not even elected properly, so they're not really there. People didn't put them there. Some of them rigged their way into the positions. My opinion. Mm. And um, because they, they, they don't owe anybody in this explanation. And the society is so corrupt that uh, 
no matter what you say as the, as the press, even the people, many of them will never listen and nothing happens. In, in the advanced democracies, you could say, okay, we'll wait for you next election, we'll vote you out. But here, your, your votes may never count. It happens everywhere. But I think that shouldn't discourage us. We'll keep striving as a press. And also, like he said, I think he really gave all the points that we need to know. People need to have media literacy. There is so much propaganda. Uh, people even from primary school who need to know, look at information and see and begin to judge through media literacy whether it is fake or whether it is uh, genuine information. And uh, maybe there could be some kind of rule where people who serve as press secretaries to governors or press assistants must be members of NUJ. It's beginning to happen in NIPR now. You see what NIPR mm -hmm. is doing? There's a revival there, where we are beginning to create awareness about public relations, and if you're not a member of, you cannot serve as government spokesperson. And government, surprisingly, is listening. Mm -hmm. The same thing could happen, like he said. All manner of dubious politicians go in, get into power there and elect charlatans to serve as, as their spokespersons who have no idea of what journalism mm -hmm. is. And above all, the ethics, the ethics, the ethics of journalism must be made very, very wide. Mm. Widely known by everybody, even those in authority. So they will know, so that when we are criticizing them, they will know it is not a personal thing. We are working according to the ethics of journalism. But I think as, as, an, as a, an association, the press at all levels should do more to assert itself. And I'm sure you know, I don't know whether you know about the, the Ombudsman. Okay. Uh, the Media Complaints Commission. Yeah. We are still debating yeah. whether it's going to be commission or committee or organization <laughs> or whatever it is. it is. But then we are saying, don't keep breathing down our necks. Let us regulate ourselves. We are professionals in the media. If go government doesn't keep controlling us and brutalizing us and intimidating us, the press has the capacity at all levels, yes. born for broadcasting, your broadcasting, any UJ for the print, uh, or even the that's one now for online media. Mm. If you give us the freedom and the confidence and the trust, I think the press can take care of itself to a very large extent unless we breach the laws of the land. All right, can we now look at the dangers? You know, when the press is gagged, when the press is not given the freedom to, oh. to perform in a nation, in any nation, in any state, in anywhere, you know, what happens? The dangers when the freedom is not there. Uh, one of the major dangers uh, when, you, when you deprive the press from giving, being free to give information to the masses is that you allow miscreants and charlatans to give misinformation. For example, if a budget of Anambra State is uh, four, four billion, I'm using as an example, and uh, you allow whoever that comes in to, to start practicing as a journalist, someone can say that the budget is 10 billion. And when the main media stream says it's four billion, it becomes contestable. The, the masses will throw into conf confusion. confusion. So, as a prof has rightly said, the government has a lot to do. The independent of, of journalists or press is very important and paramount. As I speak to you today, you cannot walk into Anambra State House of Assembly and request for the constituency project being done by the 30 House <laughs> members, and you get it. So this is where we need to start. Because if the people, I am from Munchikoka local government, and if I don't know my constituency project that is being given to my House member, how do I compare my House member to a Zekudem? And likewise, every other local government. So what we are saying is, allow the press to do their work for a better society. Mm. We cannot hold the governor accountable for not developing the state mm -hmm. where we have 
30 house members, we have TC chairmen, we have councillors. These are people holding little positions which, if the press can make them accountable, the work will be easier for the governor. Because our governor, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, is doing his best. But we cannot hold the government functionaries accountable because their duties and what they do are not presented to the press properly. When I mean properly, I mean properly. Oh. <laughs> you know the summary of that? Uh, no. When the press is not free in a democracy, I keep talking about democracy, you can't go to Russia or go to any of these countries that are not democratic and begin to, begin to assert your rights. The result is impunity by those in government. You can do anything you like because you know nothing no will happen. And no checks and balances. But if the press is free, like he said, to tell you that your constituency chairman, your, your TC chairman, look at the amount of money he received for this financial year. And you're looking for where did he spend that money? What has he done? And the press gives you all the information. And maybe, you know, one, one major function of the press is to, to, to create a platform for public debate and mm. discussion. You, you, you look at somewhere where the DC chairman has spent his money or the House of Representatives or the senator has done constituency projects. And you bring the, uh, uh, and they debate on what did you do in your own people in their constituency. And let me tell you what I've yes. done in my own. Uh -huh. Let me tell you what I have done in my own. You let, but they won't allow that. And in summary, gag the press, brutalize us in a democracy like Nigeria, result is impunity. And it's happening here. Dysfunctional society. Dysfunctional society. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, uh, now, from, from what we've said so far, you know, and from what we see on a daily basis, we can boldly say that the press is not really, you know, given freedom the way to to it, it is, to practice effectively, or to take its rightful place in the society. Now, I don't know, what, do you, what can you tell the government of the day and the journalists? Because when we are talking to journalists, we are also talking to the government. Because a lot of journalists have reduced themselves we can't, there's no <laughs> doubt about it because of what they are seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, some people must eat and sometimes you see yourself doing what you're not supposed to do. When your, your pride of place should be there, you see yourself down there. So what do we now do as a people, as journalists, what do we do to see that we are given the right of place to perform? And what's the responsibility on the part of government to see that the press is given her freedom. Okay, thank you for your uh, It's not just the government or the journalists. We need to talk to our people in the Igbo, in the Bahia. They need to invest in uh, journalism. If you go to the West, individuals invest in journalism. Like currently now in Anambra State. I don't think we have any TV, private TV station in Anambra State, do we? They are coming up. <laughs> they are coming up. <laughs> so these are the issues. These are the issues. So the people also, the the elites. the investors, the elites, the people that feels they have the money, they don't know where to throw it into. They should throw it into journalism. Start up a TV station. Employ qualified journalists to handle it. This is one of the major things I think we need for now, because it is so bad that a state like Anambra State. We don't have any private TV station functioning any <coughs> private TV station. I know when we were growing up, we had about Minach and the rest of them, but they all collapsed mm. because people, people don't see it, uh, people don't see it professionally uh, viable for them to invest in. Mm. Then on the part of the government, I think uh, one thing I will, I will send out to the government is that Without the government loving journalism, mm -hmm. journalism will die off. We don't have any budget from the National Assembly for journalism. We 
don't have good sectorates. We don't have what it takes to run an efficient press or journalism in the state. So we are pleading with the government, the state government, to see us as partners in, prog in progress, to invest and see that the only way you can sell your ideas and your prospects to the masses is through the media. Then on the part of uh, journalists, I will give them kudos for what they have done even without care, even without proper care, even with the nature of insecurity. But I also use this medium to thank Emeko Odogu PhD, the NUJ chairman, for what he has been able to achieve in the little term he has served. And I will ask him to try as much as he can to regulate journalism in Anambra State. All these gate crashers should be, <laughs> should be arrested. Who will arrest them? We, the <laughs> arresting them means we have to develop an ID card. Okay. <clears throat> that is the regulation. Develop an ID card to those registered journalists. So when you attend the event and you don't have those ID cards, you have eliminated yourself immediately. So that's the arrest I'm talking about because the police has a lot of duty to do. And we cannot even enforce the police to arrest anybody because of uh, uh, gate crashing. So we are advising the state government to please come to our aid. Help us to better Anambra state because Anambra is a love, peaceful, peaceful state. All right, Mommy, uh, finally, as we are wrapping up, uh, we talking about uh, freedom of press in the digital age. I don't know what you can say concerning all the issues raised here. I would want you to just summarize it and, of course, talk to journalists and the government on the way forward to ensure that the journalists are given the hand to practice for you know, a more robust uh, society. You know, I think we seem to be losing sight of the fact that press freedom is not constrained only by the government. Okay. Press freedom can be constrained by owners of the press, employers, because freedom, we're talking about freedom, there's a lot of self-censorship. It's not just censorship by outsiders. Many journalists have become so, so, so afraid. Afraid not just about their security, afraid for their stomachs, afraid for their families and everything. So they are doing things that are unethical, even when they know those things are wrong. So employers must encourage press freedom by taking care of the employees. Mm. Many journalists, like he said, were not appreciated for the quantity and quality of work, for the, ad for the danger we face. Our employers are not employed. Mm -hmm. they, they are not appreciating us Some of us come to work as early as uh -huh. 5 So how much six. are you paid? <laughs> what is your security? Mm -hmm. What is your uh, 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 means of? Yes, I don't know. So, uh -huh. so mm -hmm. employers must sit up mm -hmm. and appreciate their, their, their workers more who are journalists and uh, try and make conditions of service better. You know, also, uh, uh, advertisers are also another control on uh, press freedom. Because I don't think, uh, I can't imagine even government, ministry, government uh, media are also scrambling for advertising revenue without it. So advertisers dictate what to say. They dictate how you say it. Even when you know that the information they are giving you is it's not, wrong. It's not it's wrong or it's not the way it should be packaged it's unethically uh, uh, incorrect. Because of the money, your, mm. your, your, mass media, your media association requires the Accept money. It. You go ahead and even when you know as a professional that it is wrong. So these are all categories of people who, who make press freedom not to work. Mm. And then above all journalists ourselves, like he said, there is so much difficulty in Nigeria today. I'm taking Nigeria as a, as a, as a journalists who are better uh, taking care of where society is functioning better may not be as corrupt as we are. Mm. The desperation to survive by the Nigerian journalist is a matter of do or die. Mm. Because the society is so corrupt, you don't even know where to begin. 
your life is in danger. It's one of the most dangerous professions on earth. Mm -hmm. Journalism. Because we see it as, as an easy task. It is not so easy. It's very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Safety of journalists even has excited UNESCO. UNESCO has plunged into it head on to make sure they prevent impunity. Every day journalists are killed. They are, the, the, the female journalists are molested sexually, physically. There is so much danger against journalists all over the world, but in a part of the world where there's corruption and impunity, it's even worse here. Hmm. So we look at this, I, first I blame journalists for not finding the courage. It's a profession you must be courageous to walk in. Hmm. Courage to do the right thing, courage to, to reject bribes, courage to do so many things that are unethical not to do so many things that are ethical. That's one, you must find the courage. Mm. Then you must also know, be knowledgeable about your world. Some journalists don't know anything. Just like some lecturers who are teaching in universities don't know anything, but they are there. Some journalists, they should begin to, it's one of the areas you must know everything about everything. Otherwise, how can you get anybody? And then in our kind of society, they should also sit up and mobilize the press is a platform for unity in a country like Nigeria where there's so much division among people, religious division, ethnicism, ethnicism, everything political. The press in our part of the world needs to do more than their counterparts everywhere. But I must also commend us because the dangers, the, the, the environment is so, so, so non-conducive. <laughs> And we're still doing our best, but we need to do more. All right. Uh, thank you so, so much for being here this morning. It's been great and privileged to have you in the studio today. This is my first time of hosting you. You know, <laughs> what a great joy to have the first female uh, professor of mass communication in sub Saharan Africa. Professor Chinya Restella Okonna. Thank you so much, Mommy, for coming. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. We also appreciate you, Dr. Ifani Val Obiefuna, Chairman, Angel Network News. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. He performed so here. well. <laughs> Thank you for coming. All right. And that's it on Good Morning Anambra Show for today. Thank you, News, so much for being a part of it. But let's work together to see that journalists are given the freedom they need to do their jobs effectively for a greater and better society. My name is Nonye Mokoye. It's a happy weekend from all of us here. Goodbye. <laughs>